Oh my God, you guys, I'm finally back on YouTube after a very long, long month of not posting videos. I had to decompress, but anyway, if you're new here, you guys, my name is Morgan Ashley. I'm also known as Mayhem Morgan across social medias, and I am the creator and designer behind Mayhem Swim, which is a luxury swimwear brand that is known for our sexy cuts and luxe fabrics, okay? <laughs> episode of building your swim pyre. I know you guys really love that series that I did of becoming a swimpreneur, but this is going to take a turn into the more advanced levels, the more curated type levels, and I want you guys to go to the advanced levels really quickly right now because this is the time to do so and this is the time to really stop brainstorming as much as you're doing and really get to what's super important and that is your swimwear brand and your swimwear collection. So on the first episode today, you guys, of Building a Swim Pyre, I'm gonna be talking all about how you guys can learn how to curate your very first swimmer collection or if you're stuck and you're in a rut and you own a fashion boutique or a fashion brand as well, this is gonna help you learn how to simplify things and really focus in on how to build out a collection so that things look cohesive, things are ro rolled out properly in your marketing, so on and so forth. But first, come here. Yes, 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 you guys, you heard that correctly. I am giving, I have a giveaway that is going on during this video. You have to watch the video to find out exactly where I'm gonna plug that giveaway at. So, without further ado, let's get into building out your first collection. Now, the first thing that you look for when you're starting to build out a collection or you're thinking about starting a fashion brand or a swimwear brand or some sort of clothing line or fashion boutique, you want to look at those design elements that you are going to be using to market to people. So as, as most brands do, even big established brands, they do this all the time. I have a fashion background and I can pretty much fashion forecast anything that's going to happen. I know what's going to happen next and that's because I pay attention to the very small things that most people do not pay attention to if they are not in our space or in our field. So when you're looking at those design elements, the things that you want to look out for are patterns, okay? Because patterns always repeat itself, especially with collections that are known for having a uh, signature style. <laughs> so the design elements that definitely include like your patterns, your fabrics, what type of things you're going to be implementing into your collection. And that's something I always start off with. Those are the fundamental like building blocks of curated collection. It's looking at those design design elements that you want to bring into the viewpoint of other people, meaning your customers. So if you're designing a spring wear, a spring wear, a spring collection or a summer collection, you might want to look at the design elements along the lines of what's going to be really cute for you to sell to your customers in that season so a lot of those design elements are going to probably look like florals or stripes and they're going to look they're going to come in different shades so you can do the same thing in another collection which i will get into but those florals and those stripes are definitely going to come in different colors they're going to be more bright you're going to have the pastels for the spring most likely and then when it goes into the summer you're going to have those very you know bright colors but they're more of the dark brights is what i like to call it like the neons and those glowy type um bright colors like neon blues neon pink neon green and then you have like the hot pinks the fuchsias the you know the more forest greens that you can also use during the summertime so those design elements are definitely going to look a lot different so focus on the things that you want to bring to the table in that season and from there we're going to go into step two so in step two, you guys, you want to look at the signature hook, okay? That's what I like to call it. The signature hook is what is your brand known for? Who do we know you for? Why do we know you? Why do people keep coming back to you? And so a signature hook for me, like I'll use my own brand as, as an example. Ever since I've launched Mayhem Swim, my signature hook has always been our high cuts and our silhouettes. So I know for a fact that every season, someone is going to be coming back, whether it's a repeat customer or a new customer landing on something that I produce previously and they're going to be looking at me for 
sorry, my high cuts and my silhouettes. And they're also gonna be coming back to me for my fabrics. Like people love the fabrics that I give out, what I produce with my fabrics, and that's because my fabrics do not have wear and tear on them, okay, you guys? I have longevity with my pieces, and that's why people love me and people keep coming to me and people ask for custom pieces all the time. But I'm also focused on developing new things. So when it comes to that signature hook make sure you're paying attention to the things that really 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 are going to become your signature because those things are going to hold you through season per season it could be the cuts it could be the trims that you use it could be the same fabrics and silhouettes that you use it could be a certain type of design meaning if you're known for um your actual logo you can implement that logo into every single collection that you build but when you're implementing it into the collection that you are building make sure that you are building it according to the season and the time that you're in because it's gonna make a whole lot more sense when people are buying from you and they're looking for certain things to change during the season and again I'm gonna get into that a little later in the video oh so I heard you want to participate in the giveaway you want to know what that giveaway is I am giving away four four clubhouse invites you guys I'm giving away four of my clubhouse invites specifically to a swimpreneur specifically to someone who is in the swimwear or fashion space because I have a club on clubhouse called the swimpire and we're going to be talking about very 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 in-depth topics around collections around the fashion scene around the swimwear space and I'm going to be giving information that I do not give on my YouTube channel and this is the perfect opportunity for you to participate because I know you guys have a lot of questions that I don't get to all the time so you'll be able to pick my brain and other fellow swimpreneurs I love to hear from you I love to know what's going on with you guys so if you want one of those whoa one of those four invites into clubhouse all you have to do you guys is like this video subscribe to this channel which you should already be subscribed okay like this video subscribe to this channel share the best part of this video that you like and I mean share it screenshot it you can screenshot this photo right here <laughs> you can screenshot this one and post it on your Instagram stories and tag me, okay? Tag me, you guys. That's the only way I'm gonna know if you're in the video or in the uh, giveaway because if I don't see you tag me, how am I gonna know? And follow me on my Instagram because obviously that would be the right thing to do. But tag me, that's all you gotta do, guys. Peace. <laughs> So you have already have your design elements and you already have your signature hook. So let's get into step three. Step three, you guys, is all about storytelling visually, okay? Do not sleep on this part of curating your collection because storytelling visually is what people are known to be coming back to you time and time again. So yes, you have your signature. Yes, you have your design elements. But if your pictures are not going to do your brand justice, if I cannot tell what you are trying to portray, what story you're trying to give, what mood you're trying to set, what vibe you're giving off in a single photo, because you know we're all visually, you know, going at things these days. People really don't like to read. They're not going to be reading your story all the time. That's something that comes very um, new to new customers and old customers. They learn through storytelling. They learn through you showing up for yourself and for your brand. So in your storytelling moments, make sure that you are providing photos of your brand the way that you want your brand to be seen. Lifestyle is such a trendy word right now, but that makes perfect sense because lifestyle is an overall Thing of how we are living so if your brand is telling a lifestyle story you have to build the lifestyle of your brand so if you have like a ghetto fabulous brand you want to make sure that you're having those ghetto fabulous elements inside of your storytelling which goes back to design elements so if you're ghetto fabulous you know I like to show off. I'm like, I'm a little flashy. I like my gold chains. I like my gold rings, gold watch, gold everything. You know what I'm saying? I like big jewels. I like bags. I like shoes. So if I'm going to have a ghetto fabulous brand, I'm going to make sure that those design elements are always shown some way, somehow in the photos that I show you guys publicly on social media, on my website, on my blog. I'm going to make sure <laughs> that I keep giving you guys that aesthetic because your aesthetic is what people buy from you guys. They're always going to buy into you before they buy into your brand. So make sure that you are telling the story through your photos and make sure that it makes sense. Let's go right in to step number four. So this is a big one, you guys. In step four, this is where everything really, really comes together. 
because you're never truly finished designing as a designer, as someone who's curating collections, as someone who's evolving with their brand. Your job is never done. Once you put out that, that collection, you are literally moving from that collection to the next. There's really no time to waste during these moments because you have the momentum, you have the push, you've put in all this work, you've designed this beautiful collection. So in the last step, this phase right here, like I said, it's the most important. You're going to use your audience to direct you in the right direction for your next collection. Okay, you guys, that was a mouthful. But let me break this down. You wanna look at things at what people purchase the most. You wanna look at things like what people have shared, what type of person actually shared your content. Look at those profiles of the people who are sharing you out and sharing your content because you will have a better idea of the type of people that you are attracting. So if you've ever felt like you were falling a little bit short on who your target audience is, your target audience always reveals themselves by how much they participate crowd participation, how much they participate and how much they interact with you on a daily level, on a weekly level, on, you know, bi-weekly level, bi-monthly level, however they are responding to you is a very good indication on who your target audience just may be. So who's sharing it? Look at their profile. When you look at their profile, look at the things that they post, look at the things that they're into. You might have to tweak your brand a little bit in the next collection because you might see that someone is following you or multiple people actually, don't just look at one person, look at multiple people and try to piece those things together, piece those people together and build your perfect, perfect girl or guy that you are catering to for every single season, every single collection, because then you can have a very direct focus on how you are gonna sell things, how you're gonna market things. So who's, who's posting you, who's interacting with your content, who's liking your content all the time, who's sharing you, you know, in their stories and having a story of feedback and things like that. Look at all that feedback, gather that data, and start building out your next collection. After you do that, what you wanna do is merge all that information, right? And utilize that information for bringing the design elements, the storytelling elements, and the curation of the next collection collection into play. So if you design something for spring or summer, like I said before, I'm gonna use the same exact example. If you're designing a swimsuit in the spring or summer, you might wanna be focusing on, you know, the beautiful bright colors because people are ready for that warm weather. They wanna go out, they wanna be bright, they wanna be flashy, and you have a certain cut. You might have a high piece, I mean a high piece, a high cut um, swimsuit bottom, and you might have a bandeau top. So for the next season, which will be like pre-fall or um, resort collection, Collection, spring, uh, resort collection time, you might want to take that exact same thing because it was your best seller. Use the feedback to get those best sellers. The best selling items is something that you always want to roll over into the next season and make that best seller even better. Bring it back to the table in a different light with new images because different seasons are for different reasons, okay, you guys? So in the spring and summer, that exact same silhouette for that two-piece bikini, you can take that and put it into your pre-fall collection, but this time at something else. You might have added, you know, a seam here right around the bust line, or you have a seam in the back, or it might tie in the back. This time for the fall, you might notice that it's a little bit cooler weather. Add something that's going to bring a little bit more structure because in the fall time is usually where people like to travel the most to get out of cold weather. So they're traveling somewhere most likely tropical, somewhere where the sun is always shining, where the waves are always flowing, where the beach is always bright, warm, and they can lay out and get their tan. They can lay out and do whatever they want, have some drinks at the beach. This is how you curate your collection. You have to build it around the lifestyle of the people that are moving around per season. So even that same silhouette that you have been working with in the summer and it was a bestseller and it's popping and you're like, oh, I wanna bring that back. When you bring that back, make sure you're bringing it back for the next season, okay? I keep saying season because it's super important to merge things on to the next season. Don't keep changing up your designs. Don't keep giving people so many different things to choose from. The best designers in the world, you guys, the high designers in the world, and I hate to use luxury fashion for as an example all the time, but the highest designers, the people that, you know, are curating everything all the time, they repeat every single thing. If you go onto YouTube, <laughs> type in fashion shows, okay? And look how many times you see the same thing repeated in one fashion show. The idea is to sell them a story and to sell them a signature look 
every single time. So if you have a flower on the shoulder, that thing, that one flower, if it was a bestseller, it's going to come back the next season. And that flower is probably going to be placed all down the sleeve or all down the other sleeve or on the back. But you're going to keep seeing the repeat design elements because that's how you build a brand. That's how you build your story. That's how you build your customers. That's how you get higher engagement rates because people want to see you have some sort of cohesiveness across the board with you being the designer, you pushing out the designer and you manufacturing everything that you are bringing to the table for marketing purposes. Okay. I know, I know that was a lot. That was a whole lot to take in. I know. Trust me. I know. Okay. I, I know. All right. However, if you guys like this video, make sure that you hit that like button down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe because I love new subscribers. Make sure that you are sharing this video out. Sharing is caring. Share your favorite parts of this video or any of my other videos and tag me so I can repost you so I know who you are, okay? Do all those things and make sure that you participate in the giveaway because you need to, okay? Anyway, I'll see you guys in a couple of days on my next upload. Peace. <laughs> Thank you.